No one values their warriors as much as the Protoss. It's understandable, their race is small in number and each combat unit is precious. But the lack of manpower, as we know, is compensated for by technology. Even a mortally wounded Protoss warrior remains a warrior. The Dragoon Exoskeleton provides a second chance to serve Ayer, and every self-respecting Templar certainly makes use of it. After the Dark Templars were expelled from their homeworld, they were forced to develop technologies that in the absence of familiar resources of Ayer began to diverge significantly from the Kalai technologies. The technologies of the Zelnaga, which were present on the starship on which the exiles were banished into the cold and opaque void of the space, certainly played a significant role in this. Many of you have asked me to shed light on the subject of Stalkers, as one of the main combat units of the Nair regime, so today's episode will be dedicated to them. Enjoy watching! To begin with, it should be noted that the differences between the Kalai and the Nerezim go beyond just the color of their eyes, the armor they use, and the energy they draw upon, although that is certainly relevant as well. They also employ completely different combat techniques and overall war strategies. In contrast to the heavily armored Zealots, the Dark Templar preferred to emphasize speed and maneuverability. No, I am not implying that Zealots have issues in that regard. We've all heard about the grace and reflexes of the Protoss. But even among the best, there are favorites. So the Dark Templars, sacrificing defense, focus more on delivering precise, intricately planned attacks. Their goal is to inflict the maximum amount of damage in the shortest possible time. The equipment of Dark Templars is not designed for prolonged battles. They are masters of stealth, and that's their forte. And for a long time that was sufficient. However, the war with the Zerg that erupted and the subsequent loss of Ayer showed the Nerezim that stealth and agility alone would not be enough to overcome the swarm. To compensate for the low defense capabilities of ordinary warriors on the battlefield, it was decided to create cybernetic combat units that would also possess all the advantages of the Dark Templar. There was also an urgent need to intercept small enemy air forces. In other words, this unit had to be equally effective against both ground and air attacks. Moreover, the production technology of Dragoons was lost along with Ayer, and a replacement had to be devised quickly. That's how the Stalkers came into existence, inspired by ancient Kalai scientists' designs. However, despite some external similarities, these combat units had striking differences. Firstly, maneuverability. Stalkers are much more agile than their progenitors. This is reflected in their movement as well as their attack speed. Unlike the phase disruptors used in Dragoons, Stalkers are equipped with particle disruptors. While being 19% less powerful in direct damage, they have a 23% higher rate of fire. Particle disruptors destabilize the target's matter at a fundamental level. This is facilitated by the entropy of the deadly void energy. It short disrupts matter by breaking the bonds between molecules and atoms. Thus, this weapon is highly effective against solid objects, such as chitinous carapaces and heavy armor. At the same time, the use of cybernetic technologies deprived these combat units of the clocking field, the main characteristic of the Dark Templar, which is actually strange, since such technologies are widely used even by the Terrans. Never seen what the problem. Well, we will somehow raise this question at the Twilight Council. Moving on. By the way, regarding movement, despite the almost twofold speed advantage over Dragoons, the Nerezim decided to further enhance the Stalkers with what is known as War Displacers. What does this technology do? Essentially, it provides spatial displacement, a so-called blink. 
The Void Displacer allows the Stalkers to instantaneously materialize in another location, providing freedom of movement. Apparently, this is how they decided to compensate for the absence of Cloak and Field. Well, well. It was great for implementing the main tactics of the Nair regime, inflicting sudden accurate strikes on the enemy. However, like any technology, it has its limitations. Each blink puts the strain on the stalker systems, and therefore the combat unit requires time to prepare for the next displacement. And finally, we come to the most important aspect. The main drastic difference between Stalker and Dragoon is that Stalker is not controlled by a heavily wounded Protoss placed in an exoskeleton, but rather directly by the Nerezim warrior himself, who is in symbiosis with the machine. It's not artificial intelligence like in the case of Purifiers, but the actual shadow essence of the Dark Templar, his soul. We know that Protoss are capable of unleashing the psionic energy to create an Archon. The peculiarity of this process is that it releases not a portion, as in the case of psionic storm feedback or mind control, but the entire psionic energy, the soul of the Templar. Similar technology is applied here as well. During the Dark Void Powered Ritual, the Nerezim is stripped of his physical body, and his mind and soul, through the direct manipulation of Void Energy, are fused to a new cybernetic body over which he gains full control, as if it were his own. This grants stalkers an extraordinary degree of control, much greater than the pilots of Dragoons, and consequently heightened responsiveness. As the Nerezim say, those who have undergone the ritual renounce their former lives in order to protect their brethren. As with the Archon, this process cannot be reversed. There is no way back. Like all other Protoss combat units, Stalkers are protected by plasma shields. Stalkers were actively used by the Dalam as early as 2502. What is noteworthy is that this technology was not foreign to the Teldurim either. While carrying out Tyka's mission on Monolith in 2504, we clearly saw who was covering the rear of the hostile zealots. It turned out that some willingly chose to become stalkers in order to hunt and kill enemies more effectively, thus sharpening their combat skills to better serve the High Lord, as not all Teldurim seek ascension. In Alarak's army there is a special type of stalkers, called the Slayers. They are a more aggressive version of the Nerezim stalkers. This, however, is not surprising, as the Teldurim like to replicate Dalam technologies and subsequently adapt them to their own style, usually creating even more deadly and destructive combat units. Phase Blink allows the Slayers to accumulate additional weapon charge during teleportation, resulting in them attacking with double damage after performing a blink. The effect is temporary, as it puts excessive strain on the Stalker's energy system, but it is enough to completely annihilate the enemy target. Phasing Armor is designed to significantly increase the survivability of the Slayers. When they take damage, special plasma shields are activated for a short time, rendering the Teldurin Stalkers completely immune to enemy attacks. However, similar to the previous case, this puts excessive strain on the combat unit's energy system. Therefore, time is required for recharging and recovery. With exceptional skill development, the Slayers can unlock an ability called Reliquary of Souls. This privilege is granted to the Taldurim individuals closest to Alarak. Like their High Lord, these Elite Slayers can absorb the psionic energy of supplicants around them. During the death of the latter, they nourish the Taldurim Stalkers, enhancing the damage of their weapons and attack speed. Moreover, this bonus is cumulative. The more supplicants die, the more aggressive the Slayers become, potentially doubling their combat performance. Stalkers were perfectly suited for supporting Zealots on the battlefield. Those who weren't annihilated by the psionic blades of the Zealots were finished off by the Stalkers. Escaping from such specialized groups was extremely difficult. 
During the events of the End War, after Artanis reached the Spear of Dune, the resources of the Star Forge allowed for technological improvements to be made to certain abilities of the Stalkers, particularly their blink ability. The so-called Phase Reactor enabled them to regenerate half of their plasma shield reserves shortly after performing a blink, significantly enhancing their overall defense. Furthermore, years later, Kalai engineers made further attempts to upgrade the Stalkers. This, of course, did not impress the Dark Templars, who value their own style and individuality. But it did improve many aspects, including durability, through the integration of reinforcing elements from Dragoon's design into the Stalkers chassis. In addition to the Kalai and Teldarim, the technology of Stalkers was also favored by the Purifiers. Analyzing extensive amounts of combat data they acquired, the purifiers constantly improved their artificial intelligence. As a result, stalkers with integrated AI demonstrate exceptional combat performance, even in fully automated conditions. When Artanis arrived at Cybers in 2506 to reactivate the purifiers, the platform came under attack by Aemon Zerg forces. The so-called instigators emerged to defend it. They were a variation of Stalkers from the Purifier's perspective. It is difficult to ascertain how these prototypes, created in the likeness of Stalkers, ended up on Cybers, among the other Purifiers placed in stasis, as the Purify program itself had been terminated long before the development of Stalkers. Nonetheless, while the instigators resembled Stalkers greatly, they had certain differences from the Nerezim developments. In particular, their energy systems were designed to be several times more efficient than those of Stalkers, allowing them to perform blink much more frequently, while also being able to accumulate charges for it as needed. In an alternate timeline where Zeratul survives, among his forces there are the so-called Zelnaga ambushers. And though this part of the co-op mode is not considered canonical, as it contradicts the main storyline, there is one noteworthy detail worth mentioning. These units are enhanced versions of Stalkers developed using Zelnaga technology. And which Protoss faction is most closely associated with the Zelnaga? That's right, it's the Ihanri Protoss. I have a video about them on my main channel, and I'll soon translate it into English. So the Ihanri Protoss are quite recognized as canon in the StarCraft universe. Therefore, it is likely that the technologies employed by the Zelnaga ambushers are also utilized by the Ihanri stalkers. Especially considering that Zeratul's distress signal sent before the onset of the End War contributed to the awakening of the Ihanri from stasis. So, the Zilnaga ambushers use predictive blink to avoid unnecessary damage. In addition to standard teleportation, they have safety protocols that automatically activate when the stalker's plasma shields are depleted. In such cases, the combat unit is moved to a safe distance. The ability Vengeance of the Void allows the Zilnaga ambusher to leave a void apparition, a cluster of special void energy, at the initial teleportation point which launches a one-time attack on nearby enemies, dealing damage equal to half of the ambusher's own damage. And finally, the phase battery optimizes the energy systems of the ambusher, resulting in an increased charge capacity of up to three charges for predictive blink. This allows the combat unit to be more maneuverable and mobile. Essentially, the technology is very similar to that used in purifier instigators. One of the notable stalkers mentioned in the book Evolution was a Dark Templar named Sagaya. He participated in the One Day War against the forces of Abathur. In the early stages of the conflict, Sagaya served as the overall commander of the Daylan ground forces on Gist. When they moved to the second Adostro Nest, they were cut off guard by a large swarm of Zerg, controlled by the Cheetah. Despite the support received from the Terran Dominion forces, the Zerg attacks remained significant. Sagaya ordered the detonation of a disruptor directed into the cave, which ultimately destroyed both the attacking Zerg and the Adostro Nest. Sagaya was killed in the conflict, and only three of his warriors survived. 
I think it's time to over. On main questions, I have answered. As for how Blizzard will continue developing these Nerezim warriors, only time will tell. And of course, don't forget to rate the video, like or dislike, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you soon on the channel. A dune to read us, my friends. Cold is the void. I am the heart of darkness. You require my skills. I am the voice of the eclipse. We are one with the shadows.